A little over a half century ago, two men met in downtown Cleveland to celebrate what they both hoped would be a new symbol for the city. In 1969, my dad was 37 years old and he was a creative director in Cleveland, Ohio. In 1969, my father, Carl Stokes, was mayor of Cleveland at the age of 42. The occasion was the dedication of a mural that spoke to their mutual passion for brotherhood and social justice. John Morrell told the crowd that his work, Life is Sharing the Same Park Bench, was painted to honor Carl Stokes, who was two years into his first term as the first black mayor of a major American city. Stokes' election in 1967 had brought the eyes of the nation to Cleveland, especially after the devastation of recent racial uprisings across the country. Here was a moment of hope, a moment of optimism. The optimism came that he believed in America, that a black man can become elected in a majority white city. The idea to celebrate that spirit came from a guy who originally hailed from Rochester, New York. Art had been part of John Morrell's life ever since he was a kid. He started cartooning when he was in the Army. He did little pictures that are just marvelous. He always did Christmas cards every year and he would hand draw them. He would hand draw all the birthday cards and anytime there was a holiday he would do that. A job opportunity brought the family to Cleveland in the mid-1960s when the times, they were a-changing. His personality, in my opinion, really came out in the late 60s. You know, he was very influenced by the times, and having long hair, it was an expressive thing for him. John Morrell's outward appearance was emblematic of the thoughts and feelings he harbored inside. He had a very strong social justice leaning in, you know, personally in, in his work, um, and cared a lot about organizations um, in, that, that dealt with the well-being of, of, you know, people in need in our community. For instance, in the wake of a 1968 shootout between police and a group of black activists led by Fred Ahmed Evans, Morrell created a controversial newspaper ad that portrayed Evans as the victim of what he saw as a questionable legal proceeding. But then, Morrell turned his attention to another image. The mural was created in 1969 when there was a lot of social and racial unrest in Cleveland and in cities around the country and the message that John Morrell and Mayor Stokes uh, brought forward was about togetherness and brotherhood, and that's the symbolism of this mural. He believed in public art. He wanted the public to see all art. He didn't think you should pay to get into a museum. Everybody should enjoy art and should be able to see it. People that wouldn't ordinarily see art should see it. He found the building, they went in, and they asked the owner, would you mind if I put this on this wall? And the guy's like, okay. We would just go and hang out on the weekends because it kind of encompassed my dad for the weekends. And he would ask people to come up. You want to come paint? And they'd look around. You know, people would just climb up and slap a little paint on. He didn't really care if it was perfect. He didn't, it made no difference to him. He just wanted people to be happy. He wanted to explain what he was doing. I know that he felt at the time it was important. You know, when he was painting it, he was getting death threats from people that they were gonna shoot him off the scaffolding. They did not want that black figure on there. They were literally calling up the house and threatening him. The mural was dedicated on June 7th, 1969. It was exciting seeing my dad be recognized for something that he had done. There was dancing, there was, there was all sorts of fun stuff for a little kid, and my dad looked happy. I mean, he was just so grateful that it got there because he didn't do it on his own. He had a lot of support, and he got a lot of donations, and he had people that wanted to help, and he, he made sure that everybody knew that strangers helped paint it. You know, people, people wanted to be part of this, and he wanted to make sure that it stayed there and that people loved it. But not everybody loved it. There was even talk in the early 90s of painting over the mural and replacing it with a new image. He was upset. He was beyond upset. And he was so grateful when they did decide to re redo it and rededicate it. And he was very proud. I think it's a really wonderful example about the sort of integrity and the sort of longevity and the importance of this, this piece. And it's part of why we're proud to give it its next life again. 
As part of its 10th anniversary, the public art organization Land Studio was able to fund a restoration of the mural, which will include new landscaping and actual benches in the pocket park that's hosted the painting for all these years. Alan Guyberson, a young artist with a love for old school techniques, was tapped to do the job. I've definitely done like restoration jobs, but like not like this. This is like, it's almost graphic design-y, but it was so pre-graphic design. It's like it's a, a ahead of its time in a lot of ways, you know? The line work is really nice for being rough brick. It's not really hard to paint or anything. I just like, I just always want stuff to last long and I want to be able to like see it when I'm older. The guy responsible for the original mural won't get to see this newly refreshed version of his most enduring work. John Morrell died in 2010 in his native Rochester at the age of 77, but his family will have it to hold on to. It took days just to get the scaffolding up and then yeah. they put it up I in bet. stages. I am so happy because I had been pushing trying to figure out a way a little housewife in Rochester, New York can figure out to talk Cleveland into making it better, fix it, paint it, don't let it fade away or cover it up. It's something he was so proud of and it, it keeps him living. He was very proud of that message of racial tolerance and it's obviously just as timely if not more timely today. My wife has dubbed this the mini museum of the house. <laughs> So here, this is an original photo on the East 147th Street with my father and myself. That's me as a baby. I just really hate that, um, number one, we're still in this situation and we're in even a greater fight today than maybe what we were back in the 60s. The significance of the park bench still resonates because the fight still continues. <laughs>